Are you craving the love of Christ? For listening to Christian Craving. Humility is being humble unto someone or meeting them at their level. And learn how to walk in the truth and the fullness of Christ. Recording in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to Christian Craving. Now here's your host, Dylan Valencia. Hello guys, how are you guys doing today? My name is Dylan Valencia and welcome to Christian Craving. Man, it's been a while since I've done Christian Craving, three to four months to be exact. But you know what? You know, I I have a lot of explanations to give to you today. You know, a lot of things happened. You know, there was a lot of projects with school. I was doing a bunch of productions for uh, University of Texas Pan American. There was just a lot of crazy things, you know, going on. Um, and also in March, my father passed away, which was kind of, it took a big toll on me spiritually. And, you know, and my, my parents are separated. So, you know, it was crazy because if we wouldn't have found out, we wouldn't have known since, you know, we're not as connected to him. But, you know, that was crazy. And it just took a big, uh, tr- uh toll on me spiritually. And also we had, uh, Christian Craven has been going on because I just needed a big, time you know to focus on god to renew myself in his word daily and to grow in his word spiritually and you know i believe that god chose today june 4th to be the perfect 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 day to post um you know to publish this new episode and you know i know in january well, i think it was january 9th we started a brand new series called sinking and um, unfortunately, we're not going to be continuing that series quite yet, perhaps in the future. But, you know, I believe God has a, you know, just such a more amazing episode for us today and a more amazing preaching that are all of his words and not my words at all. And, you know, it's it's a much more of a serious topic. And it's I feel like this message is just going to touch the heart. And yes, sinking was from God. But I believe he wants me to do sinking later on, the right time that he wants it. Because as you guys may know that this podcast all revolves around God and not around me or about my words. You know, I'm just here to transfer the words that he's giving me to you guys. And I definitely believe that he's going to make an impact for you guys today. And, you know, you know, I know it's been four months since, Christ- since Christian Craving has been on, but we are starting a brand new summer season. Our website is edited. We're going to have two to three special guests coming your way during this amazing summer. We're all out of school and some of us are even out of work or on vacation. And I just believe that now is a perfect time to post this episode. You can listen to it at home, in the car, or even when you're walking your dog. And if you'd like any more announcements about Christian Craving or, you know, difficulties that are happening or, you know, anything like that, announcements you may visit our website christiancraving.com you may subscribe to our email list that's also at our website you may visit our facebook page or our instagram account so you can find all of the information that you need to learn about christian craving there all right so let's get to it guys today's lesson is called he'll never let go and that is the truth guys i really want you guys by the end of this episode to believe that even through the hardest times and even when you're in the fire that god will never let go and that we can constantly be alive in him so today's lesson is called he'll never let go that is exactly what we are going to be talking about today the fact is that no matter what the circumstance jesus literally will never let go You can be in one of the worst circumstances in life. You can be dealing with something so outrageous that you don't even feel worthy to be a part of God's kingdom. You don't even feel worthy to worship him or to even do his work. But let me tell you something today. We're not worthy, guys. We're not. Plain and simple, we're not worthy of what he gives us. And we're not worthy of his love. But let me tell you another thing. God knows we are not worthy. And that is why he loves us so much more and unconditionally. We're not even worthy to have eternity in heaven, but yet God loves us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. Yes, we are not worthy, but let me tell you something today. God makes us a brand new creation. So therefore, with the unconditional power of God, we are worthy now in him. Can I get an amen? So, Like I said, we're not worthy of anything God gives us, but he makes us worthy because we are new creations. So I want to teach you guys today 
that every morning when you wake up, cover yourselves in the blood of Jesus and learn that the things that you did yesterday are not condemning you today. That every day is the best day of your life and every day is a new day. Guys, let me tell you, throughout these past months, things have been crazy and it's been a crazy spiritual roller coaster. And there was times where I felt like I'm not even worthy to continue this. But you know what? God says, no, I called you to do this and I called you to teach. And that's what I'm doing today. So let's learn, let's learn more about being worthy for God. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, and I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. It says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Now what this is trying to say is this. Your God makes even the birds of the air worthy by feeding them and providing for them. Don't you think he'll do the same for you? He proves in the Bible with his word that we are worthy. And all we have to do is believe. That's literally all you have to do. And trust that he can help you in every circumstance. And that literally, just like the title of today's message says, he'll never let go. Like I was saying in the beginning, God will never let go, and therefore you are worthy of Him not letting go of your life. All we have to do is give Him control, because we're driving this car through life, and sometimes we want to give control. And you have to remind yourselves daily but that the best thing to do is give God control. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Guys, this is continuing proof. These are not my words, but they are God's. They come straight from the Bible, and that is proof that he loves us and he will never let go. Just like I was mentioning earlier. There's times where we suffer, or we feel like we are fall failing God, or there's a tragedy in your family, and you just honestly can't figure out what to do. And even in those crazy times, know that God will never let go of you. He will squeeze you in His arms so tightly that it would just be an overflowing joy and peace in your life and in your heart that you just cannot contain it. There will be a fire lit in your soul so powerful that you will want to go out into the world and just share the good news and show others that God helped you survive and what you were going through. Where that big old problem you had won't seem so big anymore because God shed some light in the darkness. Because guys, let me tell you, there could be a room full of darkness, but if you shine and if you light one little candle, it can be enough with that little tiny flame to fill that whole room with light. Turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Again, we're reading from the New International Version of the Bible. It says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Guys, this verse proves that during the roughest times in our life, during those horrible storms, we can count on God. Guys, let me tell you, just like I mentioned earlier about my father's death and us having to go to California, it was difficult. Let me tell you that today. And it was so difficult to the point where I was even falling away from God. But when you fall away from God, you have to get back on track. And how you get closer and closer to God every day is by reading His Word and reading the Bible and knowing that God will constantly, constantly be there for you. And knowing that. You know, there was a verse from a song. I don't know if you heard the song um, from Jesus Culture. It's, uh, it's called Alive in You. And uh, the verse goes, Even in the fire, I'm alive in you. And, you know, just that. You know, there's times where we're going to go through storms and there's times where we're going to be in fire. And it's going to seem like literal fire. There's going to be tragedies in our life and there's going to be all of that stuff. But we can be alive in God. And are we worthy to be alive in God? No, we're not. We're not worthy to be alive in God. But because he loves us so much, 
we know that he'll never let go of us, even in the fire. And I want you guys to know, those problems, those things that's going on, God does not give us those. They come straight from the enemy. But God counteracts on them. And he says, no, my son is worthy, and I'm going to help him pull out of this. And that just proves how God will never let go. He will never, ever let go. Let me share a Bible story. This Bible story is found in Matthew 2, and it's kind of lengthy, so please keep along with me. Once again, I'll give you guys a quick chance. That is Matthew chapter 2. You can look it up on the internet, and if you have your Bibles in front of you, look it up there. I will be reading from the New International Version, so you can keep along with me. So we're going to be reading the whole chapter 2, so please pay close attention. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi, from the east came to the came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that, they, that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what he what, what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping from her children, and refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother to go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled that he was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Man, that story is crazy long. But you know, it goes exactly, exactly with what we're talking about today. The reason why I wanted to share this Bible story is because it flat out shows that God will not let go of us. And there's so much proof, so much proof. The story takes place after Mary gave birth to Jesus. This was a time when Herod was king. An angel appeared to Joseph saying to take their son Jesus and Mary to Egypt so that King Herod would not be able to kill Jesus. Now God knew exactly what was going to happen and he what were he knew what were Herod's intentions. 
He knew every single detail and prophesied exactly what was going to happen, that he sent an angel.